Hello, everyone. I'm Rebecca, your narrator. Today, I'd like to share my story. Like many of you, I face my fair share of challenges, particularly with my mother in law, Emma. She's the type who loves to take charge and frequently oversteps the boundaries that my husband, Anthony, and I have set. Despite our multiple warnings, we struggle to enforce these boundaries, allowing Emma to exert a considerable influence over our lives for quite some time. It's not that she was outright rude or openly disliked me, but she had her subtle ways of showing her discontent. She didn't hesitate to critique my personal style, and strangely enough, she didn't hold back on her comments about her own son either. The list of things she's done without our approval is extensive, but one particularly striking instance was our wedding. Emma took it upon herself to change everything, from the decorations and flowers to the cake. We managed to stop her from altering the venue, but for everything else, we had to either go along with her choices or incur financial losses. When confronted, her response was always that she believed she knew best and had superior taste. Her expensive preferences did little to mask her lack of respect for our choices, which was both insulting and frustrating. As for Anthony, he found it challenging to stand up to his mother, cutting off contact was never on his radar. I tried my best to overlook her intrusions and for a while, things remained stable. That was until Emma found a new way to assert her opinions. After years of saving, Anthony and I finally bought our dream home. It was perfect for us, and I took great care to decorate it in a way that reflected our personalities. However, Emma's reaction was far from pleasant. She criticized our choices and the way we'd styled the place, claiming it looked cheap and tasteless. She insisted we should have consulted her, but we made it clear that our decisions were final, and we loved our home just as it was. Despite her protests and offers to improve our space to her liking, we stood firm. Our home was a reflection of us, not her, and we intended to keep it that way. In sharing this, I hope not only to vent but to connect with others facing similar challenges. It's a reminder that while we can't control how others behave, we can choose how we respond and what we hold dear. I've never appreciated how forcefully Emma insisted we make changes based on her suggestions, but this time, Anthony and I were resolute in keeping her out of our decisions. Despite her relentless texts, calls, and unexpected visits, we held our ground. But Emma wasn't one to back down easily. She devised a more cunning approach to disrupt our peace. To celebrate finally purchasing our home after years of saving, Anthony and I decided to treat ourselves to a short vacation out of state. It had been ages since we'd been able to get away, and with a bit of extra money, it felt like the perfect opportunity. Our home was supposed to be empty during our trip, but a kind gentleman from our neighborhood in his 70s offered to keep an eye on it. He promised to notify us if anything seemed out of the ordinary, though we weren't expecting any trouble. Imagine our surprise when he called to inform us that he saw four women entering our house. Alarmed, we pressed for details, and one woman's description unmistakably matched Emma's. Confused and irritated, Anthony and I needed to understand what was happening. I called Emma directly to confront her. Emma, what are you doing at our house? Our neighbor saw you and some people entering. She replied nonchalantly, Oh, I'll be staying here for two weeks with my friends, just four of them. But don't worry, no wild parties or anything. We thought it would be nice to spend some quality time together. Plus, your house could use some looking after. Think of it as us house sitting for you. But we're not even home. Why would you bring your friends over without us there? I asked, bewildered. Don't fret, I'll entertain them. And with the recent break ins around your neighborhood, consider this us keeping your place secure. It's better this way, especially with all the valuables you and Anthony have. We wouldn't want anything to go missing now, would we? Emma reasoned. While her justification had some merit, her approach was entirely uninvited and invasive. It was yet another instance of her crossing boundaries, disguised as concern for our new home. Her tone during our conversation left me feeling uneasy and suspicious. The casual way she mentioned house sitting felt too convenient, almost as if she had orchestrated this visit well in advance. The fact that she arrived with friends unannounced, knowing we weren't home, raised several red flags for me. It appeared she had used her key to enter our house, and I shudder to think what could have happened if our neighbor hadn't noticed and informed us right away. I was grateful for his vigilance, but I couldn't shake the feeling that my gratitude might be premature, as something unsettling loomed in my thoughts. I shared my concerns with Anthony, expressing how uncomfortable it made me that Emma was bringing strangers into our home. 
It just didn't sit right, and I struggled to understand her motives. Anthony seemed to take it in stride, believing it was fortunate that someone was looking after our home, which might deter burglaries. But my worries extended beyond the threat of theft. Emma's history of overstepping boundaries was well documented in our experiences with her, and this felt like another glaring example. He tried to reassure me, suggesting we address the issue with Emma once we returned home. He acknowledged that his reluctance to confront his mother had to change, especially given her recent actions. I understood his difficulty, knowing that Emma had raised him alone, but something had to give. I still felt anxious, not entirely reassured by Anthony's resolve. The following day, our neighbor's call only heightened my unease. He asked if we were still on vacation, and I explained Emma and her friends were at our house, supposedly to keep it safe. His next words sent a chill down my spine. He reported hearing a lot of noise coming from our home, not the usual sounds of someone living there, but more akin to renovation work. This unexpected news left Anthony and me speechless, grappling with the implications of Emma's actions in our absence. The situation was becoming increasingly alarming, challenging our initial perceptions and forcing us to confront the unsettling reality awaiting us upon our return. The revelation from our neighbor made everything fall into place. Emma, my mother-in-law, had often expressed her disdain for my decorating skills, deeming them tasteless while insisting she knew better. Her sudden silence regarding our decor after learning about our short getaway now felt ominously significant. Anthony speculated about the nature of the noises, wondering if there might have been a misunderstanding. However, the neighbor's observations of delivery trucks bringing in interior decoration items and the sight of Emma and her friends actively participating in the changes left no room for doubt. It turned out that one of her companions was a known interior decorator, a detail that only deepened our suspicions. The thought of Emma taking it upon herself to overhaul our home's interior without our consent was heart-wrenching. Both Anthony and I were in a state of disbelief and panic, grappling with the reality of her unwelcome intrusions. We expressed our gratitude to the neighbor for his vigilance and clarified that Emma's actions were unauthorized, underscoring the gravity of the situation. Overwhelmed by frustration and the urgent need to intervene, we knew we had to take action. I declared our vacation officially over. I couldn't enjoy another moment under the weight of this betrayal. Anthony shared my distress, apologizing for his mother's unrestrained actions and baffled by her choice to involve friends in this unwarranted project. Faced with no other option to halt Emma's endeavors before more damage was done, I contemplated involving the authorities. However, the thought of calling the police on Emma felt distressing for Anthony. Ultimately, the urgency of the situation outweighed our reservations. With Anthony's reluctant consent, I contacted the police to request a welfare check citing the ongoing disturbances reported by our neighbor. Although this decisive action felt drastic, it seemed to be the only viable way to protect our home from further unauthorized alterations. When I called the police, I refrained from disclosing my suspicions but mentioned that my mother-in-law and her friends were staying at our house. Given the recent spike in burglaries, the police took my concerns seriously and conducted a welfare check. The feedback from the officers was nothing short of shocking. They reported that our home was in chaos, with ongoing demolition causing dust and damage everywhere. My carefully selected decorations were either mishandled or missing, a clear testament to their disregard for our belongings. Upon returning home, the reality was as bad as the police had described, if not worse. The images they shared revealed the extent of the havoc wreaked during our absence. Overwhelmed by the scene, I experienced an intense emotional breakdown, feeling inconsolable. Anthony, though deeply injured, managed to maintain his composure enough to engage directly with the police. He made it clear that his mother had massively overstepped by undertaking renovations without our permission, resulting in significant damage. The officers on site sympathized with our plight, acknowledging the financial and emotional toll of her unauthorized alterations. Faced with the choice of pressing charges for property destruction, Anthony and I agreed we wanted to hold Emma accountable for her actions. The police were supportive, offering to initiate the legal process on our behalf and promising to provide further documentation of the damage. In the meantime, we arranged for my sister to watch over the house until we could return. Anthony took charge, determined to ensure his mother faced consequences for her recklessness while I unleashed every curse I could muster in my state of distress.
I struggled to find the right words to express my feelings about Emma, but Anthony handled the situation with a level of calm and decisiveness that felt nothing short of heroic. He promptly arranged our return flights, determined to tackle the aftermath of Emma's intrusion as quickly as possible. Our immediate focus shifted to rectifying the chaos she had caused and beginning the arduous process of rebuilding what had been carelessly destroyed. Upon our arrival back in our hometown, we wasted no time and headed straight to the police station to take formal action against Emma's unauthorized renovations. We presented the officers with photographs showcasing her home's original state alongside the devastation she had inflicted. The officers were visibly appalled by the extent of the damage and suggested we pursue legal action for the havoc she had wreaked. My frustration and anger reached a boiling point as I became resolute in ensuring Emma learned a harsh lesson for her actions. Our decision to confront her at the police station where she was being held stemmed from a desire to face her directly and make her understand the gravity of her behavior. When we finally saw Emma, she responded with a fiend innocence and confusion, questioning why she had been incarcerated as if she were unaware of the chaos she had caused. Her lack of remorse, coupled with her insistence that she was merely helping us by imposing her case on our home, was infuriating. Anthony, equally incensed, challenged her delusion head-on, confronting her audacity and utter disregard for our wishes and pro Property. Emma's defense dripped with entitlement as she asserted that her intentions were to enhance our home, completely oblivious to the personal and financial turmoil she had created. She even had the audacity to critique my taste, proposing to fix everything if released, unaware of the severity of her actions. However, our resolve was unyielding. We informed her that she would never be allowed near her home again, and that we were pressing charges for property destruction. It was in that moment that the reality of facing legal consequences seemed to dawn on Emma. Panic set in as she turned to Anthony, carefully trying to portray me as the villain for insisting on accountability and pleading for his intervention. Her desperate plea, however, fell on deaf ears. United in our decision, we were determined to see the legal process through, ensuring that Emma faced the repercussions for her unwarranted intrusion and alterations to her home. Watching her grasp the reality of her situation marked a pivotal moment in our stand against her overbearing and invasive behavior. Anthony unequivocally supported my stance and as he spoke, I could see Emma's astonishment. Mom, Rebecca's right, he asserted. By transforming our home according to your preferences, you've disregarded our boundaries. It's time to face the consequences. After everything that had transpired, this was the final straw. Anthony firmly stated the breach of trust and respect that had occurred. Despite Emma's protests and her attempts to sway him with emotional appeals, he remained resolute. He emphasized the necessity of compensation for the extensive damage she had caused, highlighting the serious financial implications she now faced. When confronted with the reality of her actions and their consequences, Emma broke down. She hadn't anticipated the lawsuit or the significant dent it would make in her savings. Her tears and pleas for mercy were a stark contrast to her previous sense of entitlement. However, her claims of financial hardship did little to sway her decision. You should have considered the consequences before taking such drastic actions, we countered. Her appeals for leniency, cloaked in claims of good intentions, were dismissed. Anthony and I recognized them for what they were, manipulation tactics. Our resolve remained firm, and despite Emma's tearful apologies and last-minute remorse, the damage to our home and our trust was irreparable. Leaving her at the police station, we returned home, ready to rebuild from the turmoil she had caused. Emma's release on bail and her subsequent uninvited appearance at our home only reinforced our decision. Once again, Anthony firmly delineated our boundaries, insisting on no further contact. Emma's desperate attempts to regain favor only confirmed the necessity of our actions in setting these boundaries and holding her accountable. Determined to protect our home, our peace, and our future from further disruption, we chose to remain in our damaged yet still habitable house. We awaited restitution through legal proceedings, and ultimately, the court ruled in our favor, mandating Emma to compensate us significantly. She narrowly escaped incarceration but was also ordered to cover our legal expenses. The judge expressed his disdain for her actions, reducing Emma to tears once more. However, any sympathy we have felt for her had long since evaporated. She was merely facing the consequences of her choices. Emma's social circle, including the friends she had involved in her scheme, quickly distanced themselves from her. 
unwilling to be associated with her follies. Following the court's decision, Emma approached us tearfully, appealing for forgiveness and lamenting her financial hardships, which had worsened due to the cessation of the financial support Anthony had provided. For years he had generously given her an allowance, but he decided to halt it in light of her destructive behavior and the legal troubles that followed. Despite her desperate pleas highlighting her dire financial situation, we remained unmoved. Anthony stood firm in his resolve, stressing the importance of facing the repercussions of one's actions. Emma suggested moving into our guest room as a means to reconcile and perhaps regain financial stability, but we unequivocally refused. Anthony made it clear that she was no longer welcome in our home or our lives, signaling a period of no contact to allow us to heal and reassess her place in our lives, if there was any place left for her. Emma's reaction to Anthony's stance was one of disbelief and desperation, culminating in an emotional scene on our doorstep. However, having witnessed her manipulative tactics firsthand, we were resolute in our decision to sever ties. In the months that followed, we experienced newfound peace. The absence of Emma's judgmental presence allowed both Anthony and me to embrace a more carefree and positive outlook on life. This ordeal prompted us to consider maintaining this distance permanently, hopeful for a future free of turmoil and interference. As we navigate this journey, we seek support and understanding, believing that this decision will lead us toward the fulfilling life we've always envisioned.